Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Computer Wednesday, we're going to talk about CGI aka Computer Generated Imagery. So let's dive right into it. Now, what the heck CGI is? Well, Computer Generated Imagery, what does that mean? That simply means you have to go back into the history of Hollywood and Bollywood and all cinema industry. Basically, before the computer era, all we used to do is basically composite things. Basically, you're going to capture multiple things and you're going to overlay on top of each other how old school Tom and Jerry were drawn. And that's what we used to do basically you can easily spot that in like you know old james one movie or things of that nature where like you know car crash happened and you're like dude flame does not look at the right size like you know if flame is different because they composited you know a normal firecracker going off and then they overlapped that image on top of a car going boom so you're like dude scale is not right but again back in that day that was the only thing we had so you can understand this was like taking 2d trying to make it look like uh, you know uh, dimensionality adding uh, depth to it and just selling it to the audience then computer came so computer allowed us the ability to create a virtual world which had full 3d that is the interesting part before this we had computers and like the whole point of uh, special effect versus uh, visual effect is that special effect happens before camera basically you're gonna capture multiple things compositing and all, all that who had that's up to you but you will have something then you're gonna process it in computer but when you come to cgi that's computer generated imagery that is why that g is there so important part is like you're gonna make things and it is full 3d that allows you to have camera shifts that allows you to have different scales so you can literally have actors like you know standing up and then you can have a whole armada standing in uh, behind them and you can pan the camera which in old-fashioned uh, compositing was flat out impossible and that's why star wars is such a big deal because they figured out they could do that with miniatures if they can control the camera movement. That's why computer controlled camera movement. Basically a robotic arm that's gonna move the camera. So you're like, I know this is how it's gonna move around. And then second time you're like, dude, this time it's a miniature. Let's say it's a two by one miniature. So your movement has to be, let's say halved or multiplied depending on uh, the calculations. And you're like, okay, now robotic arm is gonna calculate that. Voila, then you can composite it. That's why it was so mind boggling. Like before that people were like, uh, every like uh, even miniatures were used it was like you know put miniature as close to the camera as you can and then have people as far as possible and then you gotta look at the right scale but star wars broke that and this cgi takes it on a whole different level so, and this always happens after shooting now what you wanna shoot is generally classified as plates so basically you're gonna collect these and then you're gonna feed it to the artist so plates could be anything like generally they have actors and they have some props quote unquote props this would be like you know a uh, dinosaur prop which is helping the actor to like okay where should i look that's why you will always see like you know tennis ball for uh, mother of dragon that's the reason you have to know where the heck to look we humans are very susceptible to eye movements and that's because we have very large white size notice in animals they have like big uh, basically some animals just have a black ball you cannot specify where the heck we are looking they are looking but we can so for us eye line is very important so that's why you will always have some prop that will tell the uh, basically actors they're like dude look here and then the cg artist is like i'm gonna make sure the eye line matches and uh, this is always done in post-production so your imagination is your only limit it's not limited by how big of a miniature you can make so you can go yolo on it you can build galactus and i mean true galactus not in that fantastic for whom like true galactus size things you can make so you can go yolo on this now how the heck it starts well let's go down to the nitty-gritty of it and since i have experienced six years uh, you know uh, i've spent six years of my life in this field and i even have job experience of that so i can allow you to go down to the basic level now at basic level you have a virtual world so what does that mean that simply means you have a coordinate system that is a xyz so you're gonna have let's say just for example a small object so you have 100 meter by 100 meter by 100 meter so you have a dimensional uh, virtual world in that world you're gonna start with vertex vertex is a point and that's how you start everything every 3d geometry you see in this world if created inside a computer it generally starts with a vertex it has to start with a vertex computer you may not see it like as an artist if i'm working on a software a software is doing all these things in, uh, behind the scenes so i may not see it but there is always a vertex. it does not matter whether you're working zbrush blender maya max fusion uh, fusion 360 is a bit different but you get the point that's a cad software so you start with a vertex now vertex it's a point so what does the point do point uh, gives computer basically the processor a uh, storage value basically com uh, vertex is going to store xyz value basically this point in space is going to be like okay uh, it's uh, like you know 30 meters from the ground uh, 5 meters from the back 10 meters from here basically that's three dimensional value is stored in that vertex now you take multiple of that vertex and then you can create a shape so let's say you want to create a Q, Q uh, what does it, how many points it has take that points and you're going to store values in that points 
so if you have two points let's say you have two vertex like this if you draw a line between them that line will be classified as edge now this is the fundamental of cg fundamental of 3d everything you say it does not matter whether it's video game tv show movies that's how it all begins always starts with a vertex okay you may not see it or even heck even the artists that are working on they will not see it it's not that common for uh, movie industry artists but for video game artists uh, yeah we we live in this thing so that's how you start and that's how computer knows what the hell uh, you know object is and that's why computer has actual three-dimensional reality it can move the camera around because all vertices have three-dimensional data so it's physically has a volume it's not just a photoshop layer or image it has three-dimensionality inbuilt into it and this is the foundation of what we call mesh you will always hear the people this word like you know the mesh is low poly the mesh is high poly or they have a lot of mesh that's what we are talking about that 3d object is mesh and that mesh is the foundation is laid down by vertex multiple vertex if they are connected they are generally connected via edge now if you remember your school uh, geometry you remember that we have multiple things that have sides closed shape so the smallest closed shape you can make is a triangle because if you go higher than that you end up with a square you can cut square down basically you can take a square and make a let's say you have a square and you can cut it down you still have a closed shape Triangle is the smallest closed shape you can build. That's the least you can do. You cannot make like two point into a closed shape. Why? Because it does not have a dimensionality. Computers are not going to store it. So computers generally, whatever you do, they're going to make like, let's say you make a box, computer is going to split it into triangles. So this triangle allows computer to have a surface. That's a very important because till this point, till the vertex level, till the edge level, it has dimensionless. Like vertex is it's a thread and its thread is for computer. Like computer can make sense of it, but you cannot because like again, it's a dimensionless. So how the heck you make something look, something like a car, something like a wheel, how the heck you make it look? You have to give it surface. So surface comes with a small foundational block, basically building blocks. That building block is triangle. You basically three, three vertex, minimum you can have, and then you have edges. Once you have closed the shape, computer will draw a surface in there, and that surface will become the face. This is what we call polygon. Now, again, uh, triangles are, in the olden days, uh, computers were not powerful enough, so we were happy with triangles. But as our computational ability became uh, more and more complex, we started to use more and more triangles. We People realized, yeah, that's big triangle is looking too difficult to process, so people started to call it uh, uh, you know polygons so we complement uh, you know basically made the smallest unit instead of a triangle a square so whenever you say uh, you know quad value is not too high enough like you know either turbo smoothing you know high poly and all that that's what they are talking about how many surfaces it has now the reason why surfaces are important it gives computer a normal direction basically render this side don't render that side that's the whole point Vertex gave it the information X, Y, Z. So it had actual dimensionality. The surface allowed it to render something like, okay, this is the surface. This is what you will show the camera. This is how the, it's going to react against the camera. The surface is very important. And this is where you paint your stuff. Like you make a surface, you paint it. Let's say you want to uh, make uh, me into a 3D. You will like, okay, this is the surface. Uh, I'm going to paint orange here. Uh, this is a watch. I'm going to paint black here. So you have to have a surface because vertex is just a point. Point has no dimensionality to it. Edges, again, no dimensionality. Once you make a closed surface, Ta -da! that's how it begins every geometry you've seen be it a hulk uh, be it a black widow when they are cg replacing it all of them they are generally built by layers and most of the time you will see the quad mesh like if you look uh far north, like whenever they see uh, you know vfx shots you and you're gonna see a line there and then you're gonna see a wire mesh this is the wire mesh this is why triangles are the foundation of the geometry you see vertex allows computer to uh, do things and once you uh, make a close shape like a triangle then you can arrange hundreds millions billions of triangles and then you're gonna make a complex shape out of it how complex that's up to you how powerful your computers are so till this point we have made an actual 3d virtual object which you can move around it has a surface how the heck you gonna paint it so painting it generally classifies as texturing we're gonna take a polygon and we're gonna paint on it now painting on it is not as simple as you will think okay just paint it because it's a three-dimensional object it has to react you cannot paint it like whenever you see a photograph or whenever you see a painting you'll see uh, the artist would have painted highlights shadows all that and you can notice that in uh, star wars if you know closely enough like okay this is how artists have uh, you, you know painted the glow shadows and all that here's the deal that limits your camera movement if you did that you cannot move the camera around simply because light will change and if you change the lighting and the objects are shadow and uh, you know highlight remain the same you're like dude that, that that that's fake that's how you like you know very early cgs used to look it's like dude, dude, dude that that's fake 
so texturing is generally divided in layers so these layers will have different information so you can have a diffuse layer or albedo nowadays we call it it's simply the color which color the surface should have the triangle supposed to have then you're gonna add something on top of it let's say specular it's like dude how shiny is this supposed to be because let's say white color now white color on my eyes versus white color on my nails they're supposed to be different one's supposed to be shiny so how the heck you're gonna tell that on a color you can't that's why we have a different material map that map will be tell dude that is uh, supposed to be shiny that's not supposed to be shiny that's how you are designing a car let's say so you will tell the glass dude this is supposed to be shiny as hell and then let's say you have tires the shall not make tires shiny so that's up to you like this is uh, the layering that we are doing so you're gonna have diffuse you can have your uh, uh, basically specular then you can even have your normal normal is i specified that how complex you can make model is directly proportional to how powerful your computer is so artist in imagination we can go yolo that's not an issue we can go yolo but computer is like dude i can't render this and to give you a context of that like how long time we are talking about transformer had one of its frame transform one of the movie in transformer had one of its frame took 200 hours in render farm let that sink in. There is 24 frames in a uh, you know second in a movie. One frame alone took 200 hours. So you can understand. We have to tone it down. It's like you know. Otherwise, it's like yeah, it took uh, one century to render. So uh, we generally utilize tricks. Now one of those tricks is normal map. It will give you surface definition. So like how light and shadows is gonna react on that surface, on that polygon. It's gonna, how it's gonna react. So we add that. That allows us to add more detail. Let's say, let's say you wanted to face swap of some character. You're like okay, I give that face, and that face like okay, this pimple. There is a pattern like you know when they did uh, face swap for captain america aged skin has a different pattern to it rather than modeling it they are like dude give it a normal that that surface finish and then you're gonna have displacement this is gonna like you know make pimples pop out and all that jazz yes there is an artist whose job was that so uh, all these things combined gives you a textured model before this is not like oh just painted that's what we used to do in very old uh, computer days uh, you know computer graphics day, and it used to look ugly uh, and you can easily spot that like uh, watch any videos of like you know uh, computer game evolution in computer game you can easily see because this was done in real time so you can see like hey lighting and shadow has no effect on anything why again it was painted then it started to evolve okay now specular so you move around okay the shine is following you because you have the camera so based on different need, we have different textures. And that's why whenever you see face swap, you'll see a gray model, then you're gonna see a blue model, then you're gonna see an orange model. That's how they are layering it in. There is an artist who's layering all those in and then making a complete textured unit. That's how you see it. Now, so far, we have two things. We have a model that has vertex, polygons, that has like actual geometry, camera can rotate around. Now then you have added a lot of textures. Each texture is, uh, texture is gonna react. So camera can actually move around and you have light, shadows, each of them interacting. So now you have a fully interactive 3D model. So how the heck all these things gonna work? It's gonna work based on shaders. Shader is gonna combine all these two data, basically surfaces, basically geometry, and then textures. And it's gonna combine, make a mesh, and then gonna talk to the computer, and then it's gonna show you. Oh, is this a sphere? Oh, this is a, you know, a different kind of base value. Hey, let's add some, uh, you know, surface artifact to this. This is old metal, like, you know, Iron Man suit is dusted or damaged, or like specifically you can pay attention to this part in, uh, Spider-Man Homecoming one. Iron Man comes out like his helmet is like way too worn down. And that was an artist getting too carried away because metal does not wore down that much. But you get the idea. Like it's artist decision. Where is that all this decision is happening? That's happening on a shader level. Like again, texture have to follow it. Like if texture says this is supposed to be shiny, shader cannot make it like you know non-shiny. Shader uh, and textures they work together. And so depending on different requirement, let's say you want to make Iron Man suit it will be completely different shader. Then you want to make, let's say, Black Panther shoot. It will be completely different. So you'll have a different shader. Then let's say you want to have lava or one, uh, you know, something that has magical properties. You'll have different, uh, you know, shaders. Sometimes you can have unique shaders that's just for zombie shaders. And you can see that in video games very easily, specifically in Minecraft, people have changed shader and it's like, whoa, what the hell happened? Like you've seen like before RTX and after RTX, what the heck is actually changing? It's changing the shader and the algorithms. Again, there is a lot of, uh, you know, computational thing that's only explained by a computer programmer on a very high level. Normal people cannot even touch that here. So that's how all of these things comes together and then gives you a something that is three dimensional. So you can move a camera around. So if you know the camera movement in real world, you can uh, you will simulate that and then you're gonna send the uh, two basically plates, quote unquote. One plate would be real camera, another would be CG camera, and then it's gonna be compiled together and then ta-da, send to the theaters. 
so this was my small presentation of very large topic of cgi i hope you liked it learn from it in that case please click the like button share it amongst your friend that will help me a lot if you didn't like it didn't enjoy it, i urge you to press this like press it twice to show me extra disappointment and please leave a comment because i like to reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you are free and as always thanks for watching